Good to see you again, Steve. Likewise. I uh, hope we have a good day. Yeah. So you've got something happening in the United States, supposedly some liberal reform or other that's going to solve everything. <laughs> What's that all yeah, about? Yeah, well, I, I, I wanted to share this with some of our viewers because it may be pertinent to things happening in their towns or communities or possibly countries. You know, the United States legal system is based on this concept, well, a concept that the person who prosecutes you for crimes is called, in many cases, the district attorney or some other name like that. And they represent the city or the county or the state or some legal jurisdiction. And there is a new movement in the United States of liberal reformers to bring the issue of police, uh, police accountability, um, bail reform, uh, to decrease the number of people in prison by what they call mass incarceration, and to keep these in mind when prosecuting or going or making suggestions to judges for sentencing. Maybe I should explain how the judicial system works here. It may, it may take a few minutes. A person can be detained um, by a what a constable, a constable on patrol, a cop, or a sheriff, or someone with a legal authority to get to initiate a charge in the DA's office that you should be charged for some crime that they claim you that you commit. So the sheriff or the police are the ones who make the initial detention or issue um, a notice to the law enforcement judge, the judges, the judicial system that you should be arrested or charged with a crime. So the person who handles the charging of you and brings you to court is called the district attorney or some name like that. And that person can prosecute. That person can work a deal out with you, except be guilty for a lesser charge, or they can decline to, decline to prosecute. They say, there is no evidence here for this the uh, officer either made an error or we we disagree. The police cannot appeal if if a district attorney says they're not going to prosecute. There is no appealing the police have. But if if they do, if the DA does agree to prosecute, the police have to provide have to provide evidence, have to provide testimony. So the DA or the prosecutor is part of the law enforcement network. Without the DA or prosecutor, they couldn't be law enforcement because the, the police do, do not have, have a court system, okay? So um, in the cities like Philadelphia, Chicago, Los Angeles, um, formerly San Francisco, St. Louis, Missouri, these so-called progressive DAs or liberal reform district attorneys, many of, who were, many of whom were elected politicians or attempted to be elected politicians, have been elected. They have, they, they, this is not, in the most instances in the United States, these are not appointed positions. They are elected positions. So they have been elected and they have been under fire by right-wingers, Trump supporters, racists, police types, police unions, prison guard unions for being soft on crime or not prosecuting crimes that should be prosecuted more aggressively or not pushing for 100-year sentences when they may push for a 20-year sentence, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So you have a situation where many of the things that these reformers ask for, like bail reform, um, alternatives to incarceration, um, to study, maybe to, to investigate convictions that could have been caused by police lying. Like, like last week, it was exposed on um, a program that a Chicago police, a Chicago policeman, lied forty five times on on the stand. Hmm. So now all forty five cases have to be dismissed or investigated. In that sense, that's an example of, 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 of a, well, that's not a reform DA move because 
if it's exposed that a cop has lied 45 times or lied on 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 stand, the courts almost have to at least do a perfunctory investigation of the cases mm. because you know they they could be false convictions, and most times they are false convictions. Most times they lie. The FBI has been known to lie in its labs to create fake um, positive um, evidence, et cetera. So I just want to let people know that there is this movement in the U.S. to recall these DAs. In San Francisco is the classic case. There's a progressive DA named Chelsea Bodine, a male, and he was elected on bail reform, minimizing long sentences, et cetera. And the conservative, remember now, San Francisco is a democratically controlled city. It's not a Republican city. The Republican Party has no power there. The Democratic Party is in control, has been in control for decades. So the Democratic Party led a campaign against Chelsea Bodine. The current DA was a member of the committee that was organizing the recall. Right there, you have a conflict of interest. They were paid, a paid organizer, backed by the current mayor of, of, of San Francisco, an African-American woman. The DA in San Francisco now is an African-American woman. Chelsea Bodine was a white male, but because of, of the rhetoric against Chelsea Bodine, soft on crime, blah, 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 Chelsea Bodine was recalled. Um, Ms. Jenkins, who is now the DA, was appointed by the mayor, which the law, California allows her to do. So the mayor appointed um, um, Brooke Jenkins to be the DA in San Francisco. Then Brooke Jenkins was elected the DA. A very interesting case arose within six months ago, within the last six months, of um, a transgender woman who had gone to a Walgreens to steal some food. They were confronted by a security guard in the store. The item was removed, was um, put back on the shelf or taken from the homeless person who had, stole, who had taken the food. There was no threat to the security guard at all, ever. Security guard shot the, shot the homeless transgender woman in the back as they were leaving the store. This is all on video. The DA of San Francisco, Brooke Jenkins, declined to prosecute. Sends a message, doesn't it? You're still in San Francisco, we'll shoot you in the back. And you will not be prosecuted for, for murder. So this is an example, and no one, no one from the Anti Chelsea Boudin camp has ever condemned this murder. It's as if it was okay to shoot this armed, unarmed transgender woman in the back who had committed shoplifting in the store, had returned the item with the with the um, with the uh, forceful restraint of the security guard, and leaving the store was shot in the back. Mm -hmm. So this is I'm gonna let, I want people to know um, this is going on in 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 LA right now the the, the, the progressive DA so called um, uh, George Gascon he has prosecuted a few deputies who were working who had murdered some people of color the former DA Jackie Lacey a black woman like like Brooke Jenkins in San Francisco. Jackie Lacey never prosecuted a policeman, ever, or sheriff, for anything. All the convictions of Lee Baca, of George Tanaka, of the L.A. County Sheriff's came from federal agencies. I'm not saying they're better, but the DNA in L.A. does not, until this, until Chelsea Boudin has not ever prosecuted police. It's always been federal or state prosecutors. So you do see some differences but the question is, how far can the difference go? They still will arrest demonstrators. A few weeks ago, there was a demonstration against this movement in LA, a movement in Southern California, in, in California. 
to ban the rights of trans youth in public schools. And the LAPD was pushing back a group of people who were supporting the rights of trans people. And they were pushing them up a hill. They had assembled in front of the school district for a board meeting in opposition to the Trumpers who were marching to attack the board meeting. And the LAPD just brutalized the people. There was, there was no justification. Again, they did they, they, and charged them with resisting uh, failure to disperse. So what I'm saying is the brutality of the cops still exists. They have charged someone with a crime on the Chelsea Boudin, the progressive DA, and yet he's, he's supposed to be so progressive. So I want people to know that um, in many parts of the country, these progressive DAs are getting a pushback from Trumpers and right-wingers. I'm not opposed to bail reform. I'm not opposed to any mass incarceration. I'm not opposed to alternatives to prison. Who, who would be opposed to any of those things? But they're still district attorneys. They still represent the, the existing state legal system. And when forced to prosecute you, they will. And then you wanna be wanna go into prison. So I, I want people to know there's opposition from the Trumpers to these DAs. There is support for them from some liberals in the community, but we have to be ca just careful, I think, in embracing them because they are politicians seeking office. They are, they do want power for themselves. That's that's why they run for office. Mm -hmm. they, they don't represent a movement, no. They're individuals and they want power. Just keep that in mind. As a, I'm gonna say, just keep that in mind when you do any any politician who's not part of a movement. They they want they want power for themselves. Yeah. They want their names, they, they want their names to go down in history, yeah. and that and and you know, that can always have that can have that has um a that that's a multifaceted uh, phenomenon to just be to be wary of. That's yeah. it. Huh. Yeah, I would say, you know, that I'm surprised to hear that attorney generals are elected in the U.S. As I understand, judges are also elected in the U.S. Some are, some are, yeah. Some are. Some are, yeah. In, in Canada, in the British system, no such thing. <laughs> you know, like, you know, they get appointed, you know, by who knows what and who knows how. Oh but yeah, they, they none of them are you know get to be elected. But yeah, well, uh, yeah, some are some are elected. The most, I mean, as I understand, in most states, the, the district attorneys and the attorney generals are elected. And maybe some states where the governor appoints. You know, it could be. Yeah. Uh huh. But uh, and, yeah. that's. It's sort of interesting, you know, like uh, compared to Canada, you know, like imagine being able to elect an attorney general, wow, or a judge, wow, you know, like that's sort of <laughs> beyond, you know, like, you know, anybody has, nobody has even proposed, you know, that that happen here, you know, like, everybody well, just know, accepts I'm, it, you know, uh, as it is, you know. Well, I, I'm, I'm not saying it's a, it's, a, it's a better system or worse. I'm just saying that the whole concept of a progressive district attorney, it has, is being scrutinized, not because people don't, not because of any opposition to their platforms per se, but just to make sure that people realize that there's still the DA. They can still put you in jail. Uh -huh. They can still charge you, yeah. and 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 the public defender, which is the state paid legal system, isn't worth a damn. Uh -huh. So so you know you have to put out money to buy, to have an attorney, and the attorney may sell you down the river too. You never know. Yeah. So it just, it just you know I just want people to know this is happening, and also through 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 this conversation we're seeing that the way judges. The, 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 law, the way that the uh, legal system works is different in different in various countries. Yeah, yeah really. Um, but in general, you know, I should point out, say that the judicial system is not part of the state. It's part of civil society. 
It's supposed to be protecting civil society against the state, against the police. But, <laughs> not here, not, no not here, no, not here, no, no. But it doesn't work that way. Yeah, I know. Yeah, they're one the same, but, uh, the same here. Yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, not here, not here, brother. Oh, absolutely not. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah. They, they don't want nothing like that here. No, no. no. That's that's why that's why they're opposed to the. That's why there's opposition to these professor DAs from from police unions. Yeah. They, they don't know. There's, there's there's no. I mean, they they say that they say there there's neutrality, but the police and the court system because what the, the police, you can be brought to court. They have to have somebody to bring you to court or bring issue warrants. The sheriff and the police issue warrants and they can arrest you. Yeah. yeah that's what happened to me. You know, I've been charged, you know, with yeah. initially what was said was to be uh, a hate crime. And uh, and now I'm being threatened uh, with uh, being imprisoned, you know, because I want to go back to the Jewish Community Center. Yeah, I know that game. Uh, but um Nonetheless, you know, the judicial system exists, you know, in order, and it's open, you know, it's not, you know, limited only, you know, to the attorney general, like any True. citizen can make use of the judicial process. And that's exactly what I've done this week. You know, I went down to the court, it took me a whole day to do it. You know, I had the motion already sort of written up, but to get it filed took me sort of, you know, like a whole day and about four different counters and uh, and 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 clerks and forms and uh and finally you know they they accepted it you know they had to accept it you know because i had you know filled out the forms correctly finally so uh i've gotten uh, a hearing before a judge on uh tuesday morning in which i can speak to the judge directly because i i tried speaking with the crown prosecutor asking for uh the uh, ban on going back to the Jewish Community Center to be lifted because it's so unreasonable. But uh, the uh, prosecutor refused. Okay, I said, okay, fine, I'll go to a judge. And I figured out how to do it, you know, and Tuesday morning, you know, there's going to be a judge that's going to hear, you know, like why a second generation Holocaust survivor can't go back to the Jewish Community Center to attend a meeting of the uh, Holocaust Museum. <laughs> you know, if they want to sort of, you know, uh, keep that ban on imposed on me, you know, then, I'll, I'll, you know, I, I cannot consider that to be so serious. You know, I, I would, uh, you know, violate that ban. I would go back on my own, you know, and tell them to get lost. And if they want to arrest, you know, uh, arrest me and detain me, you know, for doing that, then that'll be, you know, an embarrassment for them, you know, and the whole Jewish community is going to hear about it. And that'll be the point, you know, the turning point in which the Jewish community say, will say to itself, you know, these Zionists, you know, have gone too far. So, you know, I'm ready to call their bluff on this. And uh, I think that the, any judge will see that it's uh, uh, unreasonable, unreasonable limitation, you know. So, uh, you know, I mean, I did it by myself. You know, I didn't even, I didn't have a lawyer. I, you know, this lawyer who initially, you know, like said, you know, would be helping me, you know, after I asked for such a, a hearing, you know, to have the condition lifted, didn't do anything, you know. He could have done what I did, you know, like in the one day, you know, but like a week, two weeks passed, you know, did nothing. And then I told him, you know, like, forget it, you know, I'm going to do this myself. And then he sets up, you know, this meeting with the Crown Prosecutor to discuss the matter. Oh. After oh. the Crown Prosecutor had already refused to lift the ban, right. and, you know, as if, you know, having a meeting with the Crown Prosecutor is going to change everything. And the Crown Prosecutor set the date for the meeting, you know, uh, the day after I had filed my motion. And the difference being that you have to file a motion three days before, you know, the event uh, that concerns the motion. Okay, so Tuesday, it has the three open days, three working days, you know, before, you know, any such, you know, crisis, you have to have it, you know, presented in order for the judge to consider it. And I just made it under the deadline. But the uh, prosecutor had scheduled the meeting, you know, with this lawyer who's supposed to be helping me. The day after the 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 deadline, you know, so you know the crown prosecutor could have said anything, and uh, and then you know there would have been no recourse. You know, the crown prosecutor could have said, "Oh, you can go back this one time. You know, they won't do anything, but you can't go back any other time." You know, do you agree to that? And I, I wouldn't, you know, and and then uh, crown prosecutor, you know, 
uh, would say, well, you have no choice because, you know, the time limit has expired. <laughs> you know, So that's it. That's all. That's the kind of manipulation that happens in the court system. Well, and, uh, you know, like he, when you go into the court system, it's like, you know, you know, the cattle being fed, you know, to to their slaughter. Right? Basically, it's, uh, you know, everything's set up, you know, and you can hardly move, you know, like even if you want to sort of, you know, lean back in your and the, on the bench, you know, the security guard will come and tell you to sit up straight. You know, like, okay. You know, they sure like, will. They sure will do that too. They sure will. Boy. That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, yeah. then you know, they, they don't let you broadcast. They don't let you, uh, you know, video, you know, anything of the proceedings at all. So, you know, like, why? You know, it's being recorded. You know, the audio is being recorded anyway so that you can pick it up on a CD afterwards, you know, but no. <laughs> you know, like it's... You know, like they don't take any chances, you know, anything that out of the ordinary, they don't want to hear about it. You know, yeah. that's right. They still don't. Yeah. So it's, but, you know, it's, it's, it's what's called, you know, what uh, uh, comrade uh, Harry Capito in Toronto, uh, a Bundist, who was a lawyer, said, you know, it's an adversarial system, you know, and it works it both sure ways. Is. So they can accuse you and charge you with something, but you can charge them also with violations of law, you know? So how do you do it? You know, like you go into uh, 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 superior court, whatever it's called, and you file a yeah. motion, you know, and you write it up, you know, like in legal format, you know, and you explain, you know, very precisely, you know, what the problem is and what you want the, the resolution of the problem to be, you know, you're asking the judge to decide, you know, this and this, you know, in this and this case, for this and this reason. And then they have to hear you out. <laughs> and any judge, you know, who wants to retain any semblance of a reputation for being a judge will have to take it seriously. And uh, and whoever is being accused, whether it be the police or some fascist, you know, they're going to be, you know, set up there, exposed, and uh, they're going to have to testify. And when they testify, you know, you can question them. <laughs> <laughs> they have to answer the questions in front of the judge and in front of the public. You know, you can tear them apart. You can take apart and dissect, you know, every one of their words and expose them for being, you know, the, the irrational, uh, bigoted uh, and ideological uh, spokespersons, you know, who don't represent anything other than some power source that is trying to set you up for, for being in opposition. So the judicial system, you know, uh, should be put into operation on for for our purposes, you know. And anytime we get, um, you know, uh, presented with a problem, first thing we can say is, you know, what is your name? What is your badge number? And uh, if you continue in this manner, you know, you can be assured that I'm going to be taking you to court and I'm going to sue you. You don't need a lawyer. You don't need to spend any money on it. You know, you just have to spend the deposit fee, and then. The, the the cop or whoever, you know, like is subject to moral damages and physical damages. Moral damages, you know, like if they're uh, accusing, you know, slandering you, that's moral damage. And they can be subject, you know, to paying a fine, you know, for that purpose. And also they get the record, you know. So next time, you know, they come into court, you know, say, well, this person here, you know, like he's already been convicted, you know, for slander and moral damages, you know, amounted, you know, awarded to the amount of so-and-so $3,000, you know, so this person, you know, cannot be trusted to be telling this court the truth. That's the way it goes. And then, you know, they cannot remove it. <laughs> you know, it's, it's on their record, you know, like forever. So uh, I'm, uh, I'm into this, you know, like fight, you know, so the Tuesday morning, you know, I've got the hearing before the judge. And uh, Tuesday evening at the uh, General Annual Assembly of the uh, Holocaust Museum, uh, I'm going to be there, you know, and uh, challenge them, you know, to do anything about it, you know, and I don't think they're going to be able to. So this is going to be another victory, together with, you know, the, the, you know, the success of getting my book back into the Jewish Public Library, which they tried to ban. So you can, and we can actually sort of, you know, make progress in this way and take them on, you know, and and uh, tear tear up their arguments, you know, like, uh, you know, one word at a time, you know, and uh, and we can do it ourselves. And if we don't know how to do it yet, we just go down and ask the clerk, you know, at any at any you know courthouse, 
you know, how to do it, you know, because the clerk is there to help you help the public. And then you take it on yourself. You don't let a lawyer, you know, like take, take the case out of your hands. Unless there's a lawyer who wants to act as a friend of the court and wants to advise you and sit beside you and tell you, you know, like what you can say that you haven't thought of saying, you know, that's about it. You know, as I'm concerned, your lawyers, you know, are there, you know, to help you and not to represent you. So uh, this judicial uh, fight is, uh, is very important. Uh, uh, but, you know, like if an attorney general or a judge can get elected, wow, that means, you know, we can be candidates. <laughs> we can be candidates, you know, to become a judge for sure. <laughs> I'd love that. I, oh, wow. I don't know. I don't know if it's required that you be an attorney, though. I, I, will, I need to figure that out because it could be a requirement you have that you be able to practice law. Uh, you know, like judges here don't have to be an attorney. They they take a you know they get nominated. They take a course for a few months, and then it's the lawyers who have to present the legal arguments to the judge, and the judge can weigh them. You know, it's not up to the judge to do the research. You know, like it's up to the lawyers. Okay, fine. So that means the judge doesn't have to be a lawyer. So probably it's the same thing in the U.S. You know, so you know, like you should be a. I nominate you to be the judge. You know, of your district. You know, I hope you have a good campaign and that you are elected. <laughs> Oh, that that you know what? There's somebody, that's something I need to look into and report back on next week. Okay. Because I, you know, because I think some of your saying has kind of made me think about a few things. Um, most people in this country are scared of the court system. Yeah. They're absolutely terrified of anything related to court. Oh my God, court! It could be the end of me because it's, because it's about lawyers and vindictiveness or defamation it could be the, the the whole legal system here can be used just to attack you for no reason yeah. they bring a charge against you and then you have to go to court and hear someone lie and make accusations against you which are totally untrue mm -hmm. and i mean private individuals mm -hmm. so people here are really they're kind of scared of even learning about the court system let alone using it but i'm i'm, I'm going to look into mm -hmm. that report back next week yeah, yeah. You yeah. have a test case, you know, like a learning case, you know, somebody who thinks that they can get away with a slander just easily, you know, and, and then all of a sudden, you know, they find themselves, you know, charged. <laughs> that's yeah, going to that's going to cool down, you know, a lot of you know uh, a lot of hatred, you know, because, and also uh, because they'll be taxed. <laughs> well, the, yeah, and also people are scared of uh, if I sue someone, they may they may counter sue. And the counter suit is always expensive because you have to hire a lawyer or be there yourself to defend against the lawsuit. And if, and if you're a lay person, you probably don't know how to do that too well. Yeah, but anybody can learn. No problem. You know, and the judge is supposed to help you, you know, if you're defending yourself, you know, like you can oh, even no. ask the judge oh, no. for guidance, you know. Oh no, oh no, oh no, not, oh, not, not here. Not you not, not your not no. your judges, huh? No, no, yeah. the judge the one the judge is that a rule. To to uh, rule for against motions, yeah. to put on, put on the docket, to uh, either convict or acquit, or and sentence. They not did it help you in any way. Uh, oh, okay, no. okay. Oh no, the, the judge, the judges, actually they're hostile to defendants. Yeah, actually. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I was, I was at a court a court a few years ago with an activist group here in California. An activist group internationally had um, sued, had brought a charge against a school for facilitating the rape of a member of this organization, sexual assault. The judge was hot, came out hostile as the Dickens to the to the prosecution. Essentially, hmm. um, um, told them we couldn't have demonstrations in front of the, of the courthouse, which is illegal. Told them, do not call me judge, call me your your honor, judge so-and-so. Uh -huh. I was there and heard this, yes. So uh -huh. that judge made me, yeah, yes, and they also lost the case. Uh -huh. They also lost, so the judge came in hostile as hell. They not did it. The judge is always for, I mean, in, in this instance, a school district, a school, a community college district was being sued by an individual. The judge is going to side with the community college. Uh -huh. Judges will always side with with property or uh -huh. with the government. 
Mm -hmm. I mean, there there are there have been cases where judges have ruled in you know in court some some case was usually in the federal court, usually it's in federal court with a high paid lawyer, never a civilian. Oh, absolutely not. Civilians defending themselves or prosecuting, you gotta be kidding me. Here? I, no, no. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. no. I mean <laughs> it it I mean it might be allowed, but the judge is gonna look down on you. You know what you're doing? Why are you here? Why don't you have a lawyer? Hmm. That's it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Here yes. it's it's you know you can you can uh, you can do it. You know here we have a what's called a common law system. You know from the English Revolution time. So I guess we have uh, some features that are not not put into practice in the U.S. Okay, fine. Well, still, you know, if if uh, you know you end up with a judge like that you can always appeal against that judge's decision and the higher court is supposed cool. to you know be more reasonable and the judge you know like and also you can you know threaten not threaten but you can you know um, make a notice of appeal to the judge you know so the judge you know has to reconsider what they're going to decide and because if they know they're going to be it's going to be appealed if they decide you know uh, to to convict you know without any consideration you know for the evidence then they should know that they're going to be appealed and that their reputation is going to be shattered. So then that would, um, you know, force them to reconsider what their judgment would be in the first place, just by saying, you know, judge, I'm giving you a notice of appeal right here and now, you know, if this is your intention to convict on this basis, regardless of the evidence, you're going to be appealed. So the judge, you know, will have to sort of you know, take that into consideration. You know, like it's all sorts of things like that. You know, the judicial process is something that's still like a tool and it's a tool that we should use. Right, well, you're you are you are enlightening me to the possibilities that we can use this tool. You are this whole conversation has my has my head spinning. Oh, yeah, interesting. Oh, yeah. you're not oh. supposed to know about this. You're not supposed to think about this. You know, we're not supposed to consider this. You know, but we can. We have that power. So let's take it. You know, judicial mm -hmm. power. Yeah. Well, I, I, I would love to. Uh, I, I would love to start my education right away because I, I have a lot of things. I would love to take a few to court for. I have a long, dirty laundry list of people I want to take to court for a lot of things. Personally, hey. especially, especially former former employers. I would love to just bring them in just to see them on the other side of the color. Same thing, you know, know, with with employers or individuals, you know, like fascists, you know, like just inform them, you know, I have a right, you know, to take you to court, you know, for what you just said. And if you don't, uh, you know, cease and desist here and now, you know, you're going to find yourself, you know, up on a stand, you know, and answering my <laughs> questions in front of a judge, you know, something like that, you know, like, I'll do it. <laughs> Man. They will look at you like you are the out of your mind. We have our legal team. It will take you on. That's how they, that's, that's, that's how they do it here. They have no they have no fear of me taking them to court. They don't care. Yeah. Our, 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 our lawyer will defend us and they will counter sue you. Yeah. That well, they will, yeah, anyway. yeah. Yeah. You know, like uh, uh, I, I suppose a cop, you know, if you take a cop, cop to court, you know, they're going to have their, their legal team, you know, there. And there is a problem here, you know, as well, you know, because the court can decide to award costs to the complainant, you know, like, you know, uh, uh, if I were to take a cop to a court, I am taking the cops to court, you know, I'm taking them to small claims court, you know, because they they brutalized us, you know, in 2015 for the May 1st demonstration. That's going to be November the 6th. But the judge can say, you know, you had no real reason, you know, to make this com complaint against this person and their legal costs, you know, if they had a lawyer. You know, are now subject, you know, to be paid by you because you know yeah. you're responsible. You know, they can pull that trick on you. Yeah. They sure can. They sure can. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay, yeah. so we don't have much time left. Uh, so uh, this is good. You know, like, uh, and then we continue every week. You know, we need this. You know, the movement needs to have. You know, this kind of. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, forum. and and next week I'll, I'll I'm going to investigate who who where judges are elected and where DAs are elected do you yeah. have to be an attorney because i think you i think you have to be but i could be wrong yeah i'll find out for attorney general yes but for a judge i don't think you have to be a lawyer no yeah 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 so 
Okay, in which case, you know, like you're a candidate. <laughs> I'm a judge. I get to see us now. <laughs> judge Steve, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, that guy, that singer, um, Muta Baruka, he has a, some song called People's Court One and Two. And oh. we judge like him. Why judge him? What do you think we can write that last day? I mean, <laughs> Okay. Yeah. I love it. Okay. Great. Okay. See you next week. All right. Bye bye.